In an earlier video, we learned how to model the object detections from a single object. To obtain a complete measurement model that we can use for single object tracking, we also need a model for the clutter detections. We use clutter detections as a general term for all kinds of pulse detections. Sometimes these are due to noise inside the sensors, but often they are caused by things in our environment that the sensor incorrectly perceives as an object that should be detected. In this video, we discuss how we can model clutter, starting out with an assumption that sensors have limited resolution, and then considering what happens as we increase the resolution. To present the clutter models, it is useful to be familiar with three scalar distributions, namely the Bernoulli distribution introduced in an earlier video, and two more introduced here. The first is the binomial distribution, which is closely related to the Bernoulli distribution. Imagine that we perform J independent trials, which are all Bernoulli distributed, with probability P. Then the total number of successful trials is binomially distributed with parameters P and J. For instance, imagine that we perform five trials, each with probability 0.8 of succeeding. Then the total number of experiments is binomially distributed with this probability mass function. For instance, the probability of succeeding with four out of five trials is slightly more than 0.4. The probability of succeeding with all five trials is slightly larger than 0.3. And the probability of succeeding six times in five attempts is zero. If X is binomially distributed with parameters P and J, the probability that X is equal to I is the binomial coefficient J choose I times P to the power of I times one minus P to the power of J minus I, where the binomial coefficient is J factorial divided by I factorial times J minus I factorial. The binomial coefficient is the number of ways that we can select J elements from a set of I elements when we do not care about the order of the J elements. One specific property which is useful to understand the arguments in this video is that the expected value of X is then P times J. To understand this, it may help to think about the case when j is equal to 1, for which it is easy to verify that the expected value of x is p. If j is 2 or larger, we perform several independent trials, each with expected value p, which gives us p times j as the total expected value. For instance, in this example, the expected value is 4. Another useful distribution is the Poisson distribution, which is commonly used to model the number of events in a certain time interval. It could be, for instance, the number of clients entering a supermarket during one hour. We normally parameterize the Poisson distribution with a parameter lambda, which is the expected value of the random variable. If x is Poisson distributed with expected value lambda, then the probability that x is i is lambda to the power of i times e to the power of minus lambda divided by i factorial. We use PO of i semicolon lambda to denote this function on a more compact form. If we plot this probability mass function as a function of i for lambda equal to 4, it looks as follows. And you can see that it is fairly spread out. It generally holds that a Poisson distributed random variable has the same mean and variance, which means that we cannot increase the expected value of x without also increasing its variance. As a side note, both the Poisson distribution on this slide and the binomial distribution on the previous slide have the expected value 4. And in spite of this, their probability mass functions are quite different. Just to remind you about the bigger picture, the observed measurement matrix ZK contains both objects measurements, denoted OK, and clutter measurements that we denote CK, where both OK and CK are here matrices. To form the matrix ZK, we simply grab all the measurement vectors in OK and CK and randomly order them to obtain the column vectors in the matrix ZK. We use capital Pi to denote an operator that forms a matrix by randomly shuffling the input column vectors. Of course, if one of the input variables is an empty matrix, the operator Pi will ignore that input. Let us look at an example to clarify what this means. Suppose the vectors O1 and C1 are the input to Pi. These two vectors can then be ordered in two different ways, and the output Z is either the matrix O1C1 or the matrix C1O1, 
depending on how we happen to order the vectors. Both possibilities have the probability 0.5. We have already introduced a model for the object detections, and we are now going to develop a model for the clutter detections, which is needed to obtain a model for ZK. Since CK is a random matrix, the model for CK needs to characterize both the number of measurement vectors, which corresponds to the width of CK, as well as the distribution of the vectors, given how many they are. For the development of the clutter model, we initially assume that our sensor has a field of view of volume V, which is the part of the measurement space that our sensor can see. And we use lambda to denote the expected number of clutter detections per unit volume. For now, we assume that lambda is just a constant. As an example, we can assume that the measurement space is two-dimensional, for instance, a two-dimensional position. In this example, the field of view is an area of size two by two, such that the volume is four. And we also assume that lambda is 0.8. This means that we would expect four times 0.8, or 3,2 clutter detections on average. Note that we do not get any detections outside the field of view. Uh, of course, formally, this is just an area, but in this context, we use the term volume independently of the dimensionality of the space. To give you a first idea about the model we are about to develop, I've generated three samples of CK from the model. The first sample is a matrix that contains three vectors. The second sample is a matrix that contains four vectors. And the third sample is a matrix that contains a single vector. I obviously don't expect you to understand the entire model from these samples, but you can at least note that both the number of vectors and the vectors themselves are random. Sensors generally have limited resolution, which means that objects that are sufficiently close together only generate at most one detection. Let us look at one attempt to model clutter when we have limited resolution. The first thing that we can do is to split the volume into resolution cells and assume that we can obtain at most one detection from each cell. The size of these cells should of course match the resolution of the sensors. Suppose we split the volume into J cells and construct CK by randomly ordering the measurement vectors from all the different cells and putting them into a matrix. Let us also assume that the set of clutter detections from different cells are independent, and that the number of clutter detections in a single cell is Bernoulli distributed with parameter lambda times V divided by J. Of course, the Bernoulli parameter has to be smaller than one, but as long as we select reasonable values for lambda and J, that should be satisfied. This means that we can get at most one detection from each cell. And the probability of getting a detection is lambda, the expected number of detections per volume, times V divided by J, which is the volume of a single cell. In this particular example, V divided by J is one, and lambda times V divided by J is therefore 0.8. Finally, if a cell contains a clutter detection, the vector is uniformly distributed within that cell. We note that since the number of detections in individual cells is Bernoulli distributed, the total number of detections is binomially distributed with parameters j and v times lambda divided by j. And the expected number of detections is therefore simply v times lambda, which in our example is 3.2. In this course, we assume unlimited sensory resolution. This assumption simplifies things substantially, and it is often a good approximation, especially for the sensors and settings encountered when working with self-driving vehicles. It may be difficult to envision a suitable clutter model when we have unlimited resolution. However, we can actually obtain a reasonable model by starting out with a clutter model for limited sensor resolution, and simply increase the number of resolution cells, such that all cells become smaller. Let us look at what happens as we increase the number of cells. First, we realize that it's theoretically possible to obtain more clutter detections, since there are more cells that might generate a clutter detection. On the other hand, the probability of obtaining a detection in a single cell decreases, and the expected number of detections is constantly V times lambda, as we increase the value of J. This follows from the fact that the number of clutter detections is binomially distributed with parameters J, and V times lambda over J, discussed on the previous slide. Also, and this is quite an interesting result, the binomial distribution that describes the number of clutter detections converges to Poisson distribution as the number of cells increases. Coming back to our example, we can compare the Poisson distribution to the binomial distribution as we increase the number of cells. For four cells, 
the binomial distribution is very different compared to a Poisson distribution with the same expected value. But already with 16 cells, the binomial distribution is much closer to the Poisson distribution. If we increase the number of cells further, the distributions become more and more similar. Finally, in the limit as j goes to infinity, the distribution of the set of measurements generated from this model converges to Poisson point process, which is the standard model for clutter. A technical detail here is that when we talk about point processes, we normally refer to a random set of vectors. According to our models, the set of vectors in CK is a Poisson point process. For convenience, we also refer to the matrix CK itself as a Poisson point process. That is, in the context of this course, a Poisson point process could be either a random set or a random matrix, and it will be clear from the context which one we are referring to. As for the properties of the matrix CK, note that it contains a random number of random measurement vectors, and its distribution is significantly more complicated than the three scalar distributions that we discussed earlier. You will learn more about Poisson point processes in the next video, but hopefully you can already imagine some of the properties that you get by shrinking all the cells.